very timely and important. And I think it's both a theme, the issue of urban education. How do we deal with children in the most disadvantaged communities of our state? How do we address those issues that are an obstacle <coughs> to their success in school? And I think if you look at the history of urban education in New Jersey, much of which has been part of the Abbott versus Burke litigation, you're talking about a theme that both unites us and also in some ways divides us. And all of you will get a copy of Gordon's book in plain sight, but let me just read from a brief paragraph from the introduction by Richard Leone. This is the forward. And I think this talks about how this issue can unite us. Most Americans share the conviction that a significant portion of the success of individuals will vary according to the quality and quantity of their educational attainment. Lifetime income is, in fact, closely correlated with educational achievement. Business has institutionalized this relationship by making education the touchstone of hiring, promotion, and even plant location policies. Education, not surprisingly, is one of the few domestic governmental activities endorsed by virtually all elements of the political spectrum. Even taxes, the bane of every office holder's existence, sometimes can be justified tied to the needs of education. So it is a thing that unites us. It has united us in the past, and it will unite us in the future. It's also, however, a thing that has divided us. And every one of us in this room has heard the rhetoric about Abbott, about the, the funding that has shifted to support the Abbott district. At times, it's become a very polarized debate. And I think it's a critical time to have someone like Gordon here today to talk about what are the lessons we've learned from Abbott and how do we achieve, how do we close the achievement gap and ensure that children who face disadvantage in their homes, their communities, and their schools can succeed and go on to success in life. Um, and as I stand here today looking at this incredible view of Newark, hmm. we're pretty high above the streets of Newark, right? What I'm thinking about are the kids who are in classrooms in Newark today who are sitting at their desks, who are working at the boards here in Newark, in Trenton, in Camden, and the other disadvantages of the communities of the state. Those are the children that we're talking about. These are the kids who face enormous challenges that they bring with them to school every day. The pressures, the economic pressures on their families, the social pressures on their families, the lack of basic needs when we're talking about food or clothing or shelter. These are the challenges that children bring with them to school. So as we debate this issue up here in this beautiful environment, I think Gordon's experience will help focus us on those are kids who are here today, they'll be here tomorrow, and their future is tied with our future. Their economic success is tied with our economic success as a state. And I think that's a message that we need to carry forward as we face the challenges ahead. So now let me talk a little bit about Gordon. Uh, I think there's no one better to speak to the issue of urban than Gordon McGinnis. And again, let me read from Richard Leone's introduction. There is a great deal to learn, both good and bad, from the New Jersey experience, and there is no one better to tell that story than Gordon McGinnis. It is no exaggeration to say that he knows the issues, the facts, and the implications of the struggle to close the achievement gap in New Jersey's public schools better than anyone else. He served as a staff member responsible for education, among other things, for Governor Richard J. Hughes, worked closely with several state education commissioners, served in the New Jersey Assembly and Senate, and spent five years as New Jersey's Assistant Commissioner for Education, responsible for the Division of Abbott Implementation. There really isn't anyone who's had the breadth of experience in so many different capacities that Gordon has had on the issue of urban education. I've worked with Gordon in a number of those capacities when he served in the legislature, when he headed an exciting nonprofit agency looking at urban education reform, and in his role as the Abbott Czar <laughs> under Governor McGreevy. And I have to say that in each of those capacities, whether serving in the executive branch, the legislative branch, in the nonprofit community, that Gordon has brought the heart of an advocate with him to every 